<laughs> Nothing will be better than last week, Steve. Oh, Nothing. Last week. What's up, everyone? Yeah, this is Jason control. Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 177. Today's topic is what makes a good WordPress theme framework. So, let's <laughs> yeah. go around the room real quick. And I, get I, didn't, I didn't notice that punctuation in the title. <laughs> what makes a good theme, wait for it, framework. Wait, a lip framework. <laughs> Ellipses, semicolon, framework. Okay, okay, let's our host, host <laughs> Tell us all about you. Hey, I'm Beth Hannon. I run a small shop where we do WordPress development, mostly for nonprofits, and we use iThemes Builder as our framework. Nice. What about you, George? My name is George Stefanis. I work for Automatic doing Jetpack things, and personally, I like underscores. Is this how we're starting? Is it? I didn't realize this. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I didn't know we had to pull the lead yeah, I'm right not prepared for this. Hey. I'm just following. Yeah, I admit I wasn't paying attention. She said it, so I figured I had to. No, I think I would keep with the theme. Let's right? set the expectations early. All Go. right, George. <laughs> George. Robert. <laughs> Robert. Uh, my name's Robert Gilmer, founder of Shiny Nine Web Shop out in Las Vegas, and uh, I'm partial to Genesis. Sweet. What about you, Russ? <laughs> Uh, my name is Russell Aaron. I run the WordPress Vegas Meetup. I am a lead organizer of WordCamp Vegas 2015 and 2016. And I'm going to go with the WordPress uh, Crips, and I'm going to go with Bootstrap. Bootstrap, nice. Sarah, what about you? Hi, I'm Sarah Weefold. I'm the production manager at Zeke Interactive and also the PR person for WordCamp Orange County and also the facilitator of the OC WordPress design meetup. And my favorite uh, framework is whatever is going to help me get the project done faster. Nice. What about you, Steve? I am Steve Zinkin. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive and I run the OC WordPress meetup. And uh, I'm going to go with Avada. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not true. Can you edit that part out? Um, no. no, I'm just going to emphasize it now. We actually uh, we created our own starter theme called Heisenberg, uh, which is was created from uh, underscores and foundation, and that's what we start with. I am the one who child themes. <laughs> <laughs> Say my name. Our, our actually our second our second theme is is called Jesse. So there's a little, there's a little <laughs> piece. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jason yeah, we're Tucker. big fans of continuity. You can, find, you can find me, Jason Tucker, on Twitter. I blog over at jasontucker.us and wpmedia.pro. Hmm, I started out with Genesis, and I've been playing around with Heisenberg a little bit. Now I'm interested in Jesse, so we're going to we're gonna have to see how this thing goes. Jesse's I want to Jesse. ask, first of all, the difference between a framework and a starter theme, because some of the things people mentioned seem like more like starter themes than frameworks and... So well, what do you according to Wikipedia? Yeah. <laughs> no. Go for it. Not, no, there is no there's no Wikipedia entry on that. Well, I think frameworks I'm... have hooks. That's my big determining factor. Okay. Things like Genesis and Canvas have so many hooks built in that you can that you can hook into. That's well, kind of what I use. That's okay. more like if you want plugins building your theme. Yeah. Or a child theme or something. But I think framework is something you actually build on top of, which mm -hmm. would be like, here's the theme, modify it to make your actual theme. Which then allows other folks to child theme it down the road. Because if you were doing a child theme of Genesis, uh, and then someone else wants to child theme that, you're not going to have a good time. To, to me, um, you're going to have a bad I'm time. Sorry, to answer your question, I think the comparison should be between uh, a child a theme and a starter theme. right? A child theme is meant to branch off of a parent theme, right? So you're taking everything from a parent theme and you are creating a child of that. So if the parent theme gets an update, the child theme is gets those updates as well. Where a starter theme, you're taking a snapshot of that theme. It's a place for you to start developing your theme and there is no parent theme associated with that. And then where do frameworks fit in? I'm going to let everybody else <laughs> uh -huh. Well, another thing we need to consider is whether we're talking about uh, like a pile of code or a theme that you start with and then you write code on, or if we're talking about the kind of themes like X theme that are basically meant to be so incredibly customizable where you can do it all in WP Admin or in the customizer uh, to make it look however you want without actually affecting the files on the server. I think the word you're looking for is bloated. Is that <laughs> <laughs> going back I mean, to the beta. When, when, we, when we talk about child themes, though, I mean, we're kind of, when we child theme, we're essentially using the parent theme as a framework. 
yeah. as something that we're building upon. Like especially, I mean, and that comes literally into play when you're working with with Genesis, where everything that you create is a child theme of Genesis. Yeah, but yeah. okay. So w when you take something off of a third-party site like Theme Forest and you child theme it, you're basically making a replica. And when you use a framework like Genesis, Genesis itself is a blog kind of format, and then you have a different child theme that can be a portfolio layout. Like you can have many different versions of Genesis. You're not just kind of changing the colors or adding a header above the title. You can completely make it what you want, which is really hard to do with things like X or the 7 or Jupiter, things like that. I think what he's saying is you can have many different themes based on Genesis, not you can have multiple versions of Genesis theme installed on the same yeah, site. Correct. Yeah, you can end up with children that look vastly different from one another, but all have the same parent, which in this case is Genesis. Which just explains just like my, in real life, right? Which explains my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is a really confusing thing to users a lot of times, right? When we when we talk about things like frameworks and we mean lot, I think some people when they think about a framework, they mean something like Genesis or Builder that has both um, some some ways to m move things around in a modular way and then also to style it very differently. And that's very different from something like underscores, where it's just sort of the bare bones, and you're going to do a lot of coding on top of that to make it do what you want it to do. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like frameworks are using somebody else's code as sort of a jumping off place for your code. Mm -hmm. But then when you start talking about Genesis and Builder and, and other things like that, you're also talking about a completely different way of going about the process of setting up your website. So, yeah, say more like, about that. so we're talking also about... Um, as we keep talking about what we're talking about, but uh, we're talking about the, a framework to me has always been something that is bare bones, that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. It's yeah. just a rough framework that you then flesh in and flesh out as you need it. But other people have been using a lot of existing themes, like Canvas is one example, or dozens of others, uh, to use those as a framework by like ripping stuff out and then adding their own stuff in. Yeah. So I think we're talking today more about things that are aimed to be uh, built on top of and not so much intended to be used straight as they are. Sure. Yeah. So, so that's why I use Bootstrap is because there's, Get many, out. Di the, there's many different <laughs> flavors of Bootstrap, the things that you can include, the things that you can leave there's, out, the, the things that you can build with it. There are dozens um, of different flavors of Bootstrap. I've seen at least 20 different versions of WordPress themes based on Bootstrap already, and I hate them all because the paradigms <laughs> but, are so different between how WordPress themes are built and how Bootstrap is built. But what we're talking about, Bootstrap is a front-end framework, yes. right? I mean, that's... Right. So we use Foundation. It's is, divorced from WordPress. Right. We use Foundation, which is our front-end framework, right? But so far, what we've talked about is, is back-end frameworks, right? The, the, the code side of the framework. Bootstrap and, and, and I just wanted to find this, Bootstrap Foundation, uh, Alex Vasquez likes Bourbon and Neat, right? Those are front-end CSS frameworks. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's other ones like 960 Grid System from oh. years back, which was like eight years ago, and I feel old now. But, um, and all sorts of things that, in the end, again, as you were saying earlier, that can be bloat. Um, you need to know what you actually care about when you're building a theme, and you need to make the uh, intelligent decisions for your clients, because that's literally our job, to make the decisions when we're creating things as to whether something is worth including, or if the thing would be much lighter and sleeker and more efficient if some aspects were dropped. Well, ultimately, you have to balance bloat with time to market, right? Exactly. So, so, <laughs> So what these, what a, a framework uh, or a system like Foundation affords us is uh, rapid development. You know, for a lot of things, it would take us a, a long time to build. Now, there's an extra library that gets loaded. The nice thing about Foundation is we can pick and choose just the things that we're using, so it's as little bloat as possible. Right, but there is still some extra code that we, we need to... So in the end, it's a question of what you're optimizing for. Are you mm -hmm. optimizing for developer time, uh, for build-out time, or are you optimizing for pure performance? And sometimes we're doing it for the developer time. Yeah, absolutely. 
Right. So what do we what do we look for in this? Like, what's you know what are the what are some of the the, the actual theme frameworks that we're that we're looking at other than Genesis? Because Genesis seems like that's the one that we're kind of we keep landing on here. But like, what's something that we're looking for with that? I mean, when I was looking at Genesis, I liked it because I was able to just say, you know what, this particular area right here, this is why I want this thing to to do, and I'm going to you know write some code to have you know stuff you know uh, show up there on that part of the page. So, like, what, what other than those types of things, what else are people looking for with a framework? Well, if you're, I, mean, I think if you're picking up Genesis, you need to be aware that it is built completely differently than the basically how WordPress itself builds themes. Mm -hmm. uh, so every template file just calls Genesis, and that's it. Um, so you can go in and override things, but hierarchically, when you're thinking about how it's built. Don't go in assuming, oh, I know how WordPress themes work. I can understand this. Yeah. It's an entirely different paradigm. It's a platform I, within a platform. Yes. My analogy is it's the difference between typing out hello world and writing a function that echoes hello world and running that function. That's the Genesis way is doing it with functions. I like that. And analogy. the WordPress way is the get template part, which does the avoids the re doing anyway, but... It, it, it's, it, it, it's a good analogy, but I'm, I'm in agreement with George. I stepped away from Genesis. Not that, not that Genesis is a bad platform, but I stepped away with it from it because I was learning a whole new language just to get it to do what I wanted it to do. Sure. Yeah, and I'm not in any way disparaging Genesis. I'm I think not it's a either. fantastic thing. I know a lot of folks that love it. I've not really gotten into commercial themes enough that I would be using it. But just be aware if you're evaluating things to get into uh, that while some things like underscores uh, or I think Carrington even uh, are more extending the WordPress structure, things like Genesis or Xtheme or a lot of others just basically Shanghai the entire thing and do their own structure internally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, and that's that's not good or bad. It just is. <laughs> That was that was deep. So, somebody <laughs> earlier, somebody She's earlier, being non-judgmental today. So, I am. So well, somebody earlier mentioned that they didn't like widgets being used to build the theme. Can can whoever said that? Can you talk about why you don't like that? Who said? I don't that? know that anybody said here that. said that. I think I think you, hey Russ, I think you're hearing the voices in your head again. When, when we play this, when back, they tell you to burn things you, down, it's happening no. again. When, when we play this back, you're going to hear that George said that. So no. anyway, <laughs> not, not I haven't said it's, anything about widgets so far. But it's it, I'll, I'll weigh in. It's a misuse of it. That's not what widgets yeah. are built to use. Agreed. I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of using widgets on the home page, but a lot of themes do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a misuse. It's not what they're intended to do. It's basically using widgets and trying to turn them into content blocks. Fair right. enough. That's what, well, what are widgets for, for if they're not blocks of content? <laughs> fair. Well, that's a fair question. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's not what widgets are for. It's what sidebars are for. Exactly. Sidebars are supposed to be uniform throughout the entire site. I mean, you have... But this has nothing to do with frameworks, though, so why are we talking about it? No, and it's, there's it's because, still good. Because most of Genesis, when you load it up, the home page is nothing but widgets, which Genesis is a framework. Yeah. Right, but I think that that was, you know, a sort of a, with a lot of those themes, a sort of end run attempt to make a drag and drop theme that somebody who is a layperson who doesn't know code would be able to manage on their own. What was that? Was but now there are a lot of. Widgets are the poor man's version of Visual Composer. In yeah, other words, well, yeah, there was, a, there was actually a plugin. There was a plugin that let you put widgets kind of wherever. Like it was a yeah. it was a There's widget a manager, um, and and it, it it's so it, it's just so backwards thinking. Uh, I can't remember the name of that plugin. I'll, I'll come up with it. I'm not no. recommending the plugin to any of our audience. Yeah. Widgets aren't a cheap version of Visual Composer. Widgets are a GPL version of Visual Composer. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, that's a. I mean, we so, we do that a lot because 99% of the time we're turning the site over for the for the very non-technical client to run their content, and they need to have ways to put stuff in that are not super complex. And do you think Visual Composer is the solution for that? No, no that's so, why we use Builder. And they have, as a part of their uh, theme, they have a, a custom post type called Widget Contents. And so, it lets them use the tiny MC editor to put widget contents in. And so let's, I, we're kind of switching gears now, to, which talking about 
for, for lack of a better term, frameworks for managing your content, right? So having different, with, once you've built the theme, having a, a different content block within the theme that your clients or any content people can manage. Yeah. Um, so Visual Composer allows you to kind of you know, set up blocks of content, set up columns, set up headers, things like that within, within the theme once the theme's set up. I'm not recommending it. It's, it, it is an option. <laughs> Sarcastic softball. Right no. Nope. <laughs> well, I, I think I think the thing is is that is that the the frameworks were set up to um, to provide a solution for that developer that wanted to be able to you know spend, like for instance um, you have like uh, the options framework or even like using like advanced custom fields options piece to be able to tie in to you know building an options page on the back end of the site to be able to manage things. You know, you have like those sorts of things, but then you end up having stuff like uh, Beaver Builder or Visual Composer, which I hate to put those two in the same category there. But um, you have those two types of things where it's more front end development, front end design work with some development tied into it for modules and so on and so forth. Um, it, it's you know, you're trying to solve a, solve a problem for that particular developer, and then at some point you go, you know, this would be great. Maybe somebody else could use this too, and that's where you end up with like hybrid was one of them, and um, Upthemes was doing their sort of thing. So you have those types that were, you know, kind of built out of necessity, right? Well, one, well, one of the biggest things that I switched to a framework is because every time I would change my parent or I would change the child theme, my logos were gone, my footers were gone, all that kind of basic meta stuff that I had to keep re-entering was gone. So I went to a framework that kept my my uh, my logo, all my stuff in the uh, featured footers, stuff like that. I didn't have to do all that work over again just because I changed the child theme or because I, I added something new, you know, or I wanted to go in a different direction. That's what got me to switch to a framework versus using a parent-child theme that's not a framework. Well, it sounds like that's a good reason why you would want to use yeah. that. Yeah. Well, because that's what the option tree plugin was designed to solve, is that everything in the theme, no matter what theme that you used, you had a custom field called logo, and you just include that in your new theme, it would pull from that option tree plugin. So you never yeah. had to keep uploading again. And I think using option tree was a huge jump off to move to a framework. Well, and yeah, it's good for developers as well because you get you you learn how a particular framework works, and then you can use that to create a vast number. Like, I met a guy once that all he coded with was 2014, and that's fine. That's great. He knew you know where everything was, and he knew how to manipulate it very quickly. But all his sites kind of looked the same. Whereas with a framework, you learn how to how to use it. You learn the ins and outs of it, whichever framework you use. And then you can create vastly different looking sites. Well, and to me, the framework shouldn't have any design, right? Okay. To me, an ideal framework shouldn't have any design. That should be up to the the creatives. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you want a framework that's more like a theme options framework, something more like Redux, where you can basically set these are the things I want them. They will customize in the back end, mm -hmm. and then how, then I'll decide how they show up on the front end. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have, like, if you want to jam something in above your content section, would you consider that back end or front end? Would you consider that coding or creatives? How, it depends how you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to kind of say that, but I agree. I, agree. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know that I understand the question, right? So, you know, if if it's if it's up to the developer, right, then it's going to be. If it's me, it's going to be done as part of the back-end framework or part yes. of the CSS. If it's being done by the content person, it's going to be done through something like um, a Beaver Builder or uh, what's the other one we keep mentioning? Um, Visual Composer. Visual Composer. Right. Regular expression. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stand back. I know Regex. <laughs> and now you have two problems. <laughs> Well, that was a good question. It kind of shut down, uh, <laughs> shut down everything. Right. Wait, we're we're all, very, we're is all, there even an answer? We're all deep in thought. I don't think there is I mean, an answer. We're talking about whether, if you want to add something into your theme, whether it should be on the back end or the front end. And really, I guess it could go either way. So it really could be a double-ender. 
Um, so <laughs> the options are you in the internet, George. <laughs> Go ahead, George. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so I mean, you started this. <laughs> uh, yes, it can be on the code. It can be on the content. You may want to say uh, what content do you want to insert here, and then from there you can pick any page or a post, and it'll inject the content of that into that area in the theme. Which is a, well, um, I've seen themes where they'll do a text widget in the sidebar, and then use CSS to yank that out of the sidebar and position it up top as a banner across the top of the page. Oh, no. That's no, great. I mean things Sometimes like Sometimes you have like ad to logic. So, so I mean like this... Google AdSense. If you wanted okay. to stick a Google AdSense thing at the top of every content block, mm-hmm. I would do that through code. I would consider that a back end sort of thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, write a function that exports whatever Google AdSense, tie it to the hook, that so I consider that back end, but I consider that part of the framework. Sure. Sure. So there's this wonderful theme, and it's called District. And so what it does is um, it has a custom post type that's called Sections, and you build your sections using short codes and stuff, and then you go to create a new page, and instead of using short codes and listing and stuff, you just say what sections you want to show up on the page. And so it's not drag and drop, but it's using a custom post type to build sections of pages and... That's all back end, but it's for the front end visual because the, the post type controls everything. It's actually kind of cool. But it's using it's using it's using short codes to to make well, all that happen. No, no, so so it uses a custom post type. So you create a custom post type that's that's called like my home selling section. And then uh-huh. that's where you'd be like, want fifty percent off this thing, click here. And, and then if you want Is that a WYSIWYG? Uh, yeah, because it's just using the, the MCE of the post type. So then you would go create a page called, like, About Me, and then you would be like, okay, I want this section in the middle, and then I want my content above, and then I want a header, you know. So right. it, it's pre-Beaver Builder, because with Beaver Builder you can save templates. This is a, a way of doing that because you're saving it as a post type, and once you update that post type once, it updates across every page that's using that section. I've seen that, that. Was it's in, called Content Blocks, the plugin I've seen. So, so this is just baked into this theme called District, but that was one of the first times I realized I need to start using a framework because I do it once and it's updated across the board instead of updating across every single post or page. But I think that's why something like Genesis is is so popular is because people can kind of go into their essentially their app store, if you will, their you know their way of being able to just kind of go and shop for a theme, not have to redo a whole bunch of stuff yet, still be able to switch themes pretty quick and not have to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. You just go, oh, I just need to move this here and move this there and hit save and. Boom, you're done. not have to relearn a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, so the problem that I had with Genesis was, you, even though it's using widgets, when you change a One child page. theme, those widgets go into deactivated, or they go into like not or not being used, or you know you had a widget in home left and home right, and then when you change theme, it goes right into the header right, like. It doesn't go where you want it to go. That was the big. That's the big problem that I have is changing things over isn't as smooth as they want you to assume it's, that it is. It's never going to be smooth though. When you change things from one thing that. to another, it's something's going to get out of place. I'm not arguing that. I'm saying though that the way that they advertise it is it's like, oh, you just change this and you have a new look, but all these widgets are being dropped into the footer bottom right instead of going to the home page where you could go. So I think Robert said earlier that um, one of the advantages for frameworks is you learn that framework and it speeds up your development. So if we're thinking about listeners who are thinking, haven't invested yet in a particular framework, what are the things they should think ahead about in terms of making those a choice of a framework? Support. Code libraries, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be whatever's going to be easiest for them to whoever's going to be maintaining the site, whatever's going to be. Yeah, is there a community behind it? Are there? Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. If you get stuck, are there people that you can go and ask advice for, either commercially or 
uh, like an open source community. Twitter. I'm 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 with George on that one, and I was gonna say I was gonna mirror what Robert said. I mean, part of the reason we went with foundation is because the Zurb community is set up very much like the WordPress community. It's very easy to find information and resources. Mm -hmm. And I'd say how many sites you're going to build. If you're building a site just for yourself, you're not going to want to pick up Genesis. Genesis is the sort of thing you do if you're churning out 10, 20 sites for other clients. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The learning curve factor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think Bill Erickson kind of breaks that when, when you look at his entire library and all of his portfolio of Genesis things that he's done. I mean, that guy is almost the Genesis support for um, as, as it is. I mean, yeah, he's smart as, as it is, but, I mean, you could argue that even though support with Genesis you have to be a member of to get the premium kind of support, you still have a big enough community in Genesis to where somebody can help you. Well, you got Carrie Nails and Office Hours, you know. Yeah. Yep. Well, then just look in the repo. Do a search for, in the repo for um, the plugin repo for uh, for Genesis. It's it, there. There's a plugin for everything for that particular. And I'm not saying that's good or bad or not, but it's just you know they, uh, there's a ton of code that's out there that is essentially one liners or five or six liners that do very specific things real quick so, and easy. So how extensible is the framework? Is the yeah. yeah. How, um, just out of curiosity, how much is Genesis? It's been a while since I've been... Since yeah, I, been 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 I, feel like I, got, I got a lifetime license with like a Black Friday deal. So I feel as, like as, of, as of right now, there's a pro plan and it's $4.99 and that's for every third-party theme that's going to come with it, every child theme that's released, every update. Yeah, I, I mean $4.99 is a lot to pay, but... It, it's it's not a bad well, thing. No, you gotta you gotta you gotta. It's, it's, it's not a lot. To pay. Work, not really. That's not a lot to pay. You gotta um, weigh that out with, with, with how many hours. Theme four is paying thirty nine dollars for every theme. You get what you yeah. pay for. We're talking about a price point, and right. thirty nine to four ninety nine is a huge jump. I get it. But right, but without, if you're building one site, or if you're gonna try and churn them out, like if you're a, a professional website agency. If you're doing a site a week, annuitize that. Figure how much that'll cost you. That's 500 well, bucks. I, uh, I, that's I, 10 bucks a week. I would chalk it up to how much How much is your time worth, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you could, you could easily justify 500 bucks if you, if you look at how much is your time worth and how much you can spend doing all this stuff versus buying it. And plus, I mean, good guy Genesis will always say, oh, looks like you have an old version of Genesis installed and active. I don't care if you have an description or not. Here's the update. Go ahead and get the new version of Genesis. Yeah. Very true. They may not give it to you to download if you go to their site if you're not subscribing, but if you already have Genesis installed, they care about keeping things up to date. Good secure. Yeah. So that's I'll about say this. It, folks. Sorry, Robert. That's about that's it, folks, right. for the day. Make sure you go to our website at jpwatercooler.com and click on the links there to subscribe. If you like this particular episode and you want to maybe leave some comments or something, feel free to leave a comment in the boxes below, either on YouTube or on our website. If you're listening in your car, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening in your car, just... If you want to leave a comment, pull over first. <laughs> here's the regular volume. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys, you have a good rest Hi, of your day. This is what did you say? No.